So a lot of people had Shane Wright ranked as their top prospect available in the 2022 NHL draft, myself included. So today I want to talk about why I think he ended up going fourth overall. So if that sounds good, you guys, make sure you stick around to the end of the video to, to maybe get a little bit of insight into how Seattle was able to take Wright fourth. So really, I feel like obviously there was three teams that passed on Shane Wright, and I think there's three reasons why uh, he was able to go to Seattle, and each team really had their own philosophy, I guess, starting with the Montreal Canadiens, of course. Uh, they had the first overall pick, and they ended up choosing Uri Slavkovsky instead. Now, the first thing I want to address here is that there's a lot of rumors going out there right now that Shane Wright his compete level is just not good, and there's attitude problems, things like that. Kind of similar um, rumors going around about Brad Lambert as well. And this is what I'll say about that. NHL teams obviously have a opportunity to interview these guys. The Canadians interviewed Wright and Slavkovsky both many times, including like right before the draft. So it was there clearly there were still discussions amongst their scouting team as to which guy they should take, really leading right up until basically they were on the clock. Now, as a amateur who just watches video, I don't have that luxury. I have not met any player from this draft class. So I don't have a great idea of what these guys' personalities are. Are like all I really have is what most of you guys have. Like you can see a little bit of what their personality is like from watching them on TV, especially on draft day. You know, like Uri Slavkovsky seems like a really confident guy. Uh, seems like a guy who's gonna be pretty easy to like if you meet him. And that's uh, that's kind of about it. That's really the main. Uh, takeaways you could take about these players and Shane Wright you know he had that little instance on the draft floor where maybe he was staring down the the Canadians draft table maybe he wasn't he denies that he wasn't but I don't know it kind of looked like he was staring him down to me uh you guys could let me know in the comments uh what you thought about that whole situation it was a little sus to me I'm not gonna lie but all I'm really saying here is that I don't know exactly what these guys personalities are like if there is a personality conflict or an attitude conflict really none of us can legitimately say one way or the other if that's true or not so i don't really like to speculate on things like that now with the canadians though maybe that was an issue maybe it wasn't but from here on out i am going to move on from that the canadians i kind of get the impression that they just liked Slavkovsky more. Now, I also think there's a little element here that they really believe in Nick Suzuki, like he is going to be their guy going into the future, potentially the next captain of the team. And he's their bonafide 1C. And if you bring in Shane Wright, then maybe there's a little bit of a conflict there. Now, personally, I think having competition for like your number one C spot is not a bad thing. Either way, if Wright ends up being your 2C or he wins the 1C job and Suzuki's your 2C, basically your top two centers are amazing and your center depth in general is going to be massively boosted by that. And I think that's really important, especially for going on deep playoff runs. So personally, I don't think there's a ton. Uh, I don't think there's a really a good reason there to not take right just because you already have like your number one c maybe that was part of the thought process though in any in any case i really kind of just get the impression that they like slavkovsky more now moving on to the new jersey devils they're an interesting team because even more so than the canadians like the canadians really just have Suzuki as their bona fide number one center. The rest of their center core is like nothing super special at this point, right? But with with the Devils, their centers are pretty much set. I mean, they got Hughes, they got Heischer, I believe, is a center. 
either way, like their their center core is pretty much set, and they're a really young team too. So their top their top centers are pretty much set. If they if they brought in Shane Wright, I suspect they probably just would have been playing him on the wing. But obviously they didn't do that, and they went with a defenseman instead in Simone Nemetz. So really, I think their their prospect core in general their prospect core their prospect pool in general is looking pretty solid especially at forward i do actually kind of like their defense uh this year as well with or going forward i should say with uh dougie hamilton and damon severson as their top two like offensive guys now hamilton though did have a pretty kind of disappointing year this year he did of course have that injury what like a little over halfway through the season, missed a lot of time uh, with that. But when he came back, he never really truly won back the uh, the number one power play spot, not for a significant period of time anyways. So uh, David Severson actually significantly helped out my fantasy team there because of that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Hamilton was kind of disappointing in general. So maybe the thought process there is, they're going to eventually look to trade Hamilton or just not re-sign him when his contract is up. I'm actually not certain what his contract details are, so uh, you Devils fans out there could let me know what what that situation is like. But also their prospect pool, their prospect pool on defense, I feel like needed a little bit more. Uh, could have used a, a significant boost by taking a, a guy second overall as a defenseman, and that's exactly what they did. Now, I also kind of think that some teams were going, or had this philosophy going into this draft where it's like, okay, this draft doesn't isn't really that strong. There's not a ton of guys we really strongly like. Let's just get a guy that we're pretty confident in. We like him, you know, this is our guy. He's going to be available second overall. We're very confident that it doesn't matter who goes first. We're just taking our guy. I kind of get the impression that that is the philosophy both New Jersey and Arizona had. Because really, this draft class uh, isn't that isn't that strong. You know, I don't think there's a ton of high-end talent that's going to come out of this draft class. So if you're drafting second overall or third overall like the like the Coyotes did, you know, you could look at Shane Wright and be like, is he really going to make that much more of a difference than the guy that we really like and the guy who's most likely going to be available where we're drafting? And maybe their scouting department answered that question with, no, probably not. So if you're the Devils and you draft Shane Wright, is he going to be that much better for them, you know, five years from now than Simone Nemetz would be? Is he going to be that much more of a bigger of a contributor to that team i don't know and obviously we'll never know the answer to that question because shane wright and any prospects development uh is going to be different based off the teams uh that draft them so you know we could always look you know five years down the line and say well the mets absolutely popped off and became like a superstar at the nhl level so clearly the devils made the right pick but Maybe if it was reversed and they had taken Wright and Seattle had taken uh, Nemetz, maybe he wouldn't pop off like that. You never know. So really, I kind of think New Jersey just went into the draft thinking, we want a defenseman. Nemetz is our guy. That's who we're taking no matter what. And really with uh, the Coyotes, I kind of think it was pretty much the same philosophy. I know I said there was three reasons at the beginning of the video, but really I guess there's just two or even one, I guess, because... <laughs> I kind of had the same philosophy with the uh, with the Canadians there. They kind of just wanted Slavkovsky more, but but really, <clears throat> the the Coyotes definitely could have could have taken right there, and like nobody would have criticized them for that. Now taking Cooley, I think they might be getting not necessarily getting heat for it, but there's definitely uh, some more eyebrows raised. I mean, a lot of eyebrows were raised in general when when Wright didn't go first overall, and then he started falling, which only uh, made that even more the case for a lot of people. But I I think the Coyotes just really liked Logan Cooley. You know, I don't think there's any grand overarching 
a problem here with Shane Wright. One thing you could also look at is that uh, Shane Wright did not have a really fantastic playoffs in the in the OHL this season. He had 14 points in 14 games, I believe, which really is not that impressive. You know, you expect prospects to really be at their peak at the end of the season because they're more physically mature, they're more experienced, they've had a full year to develop, basically. So really, when you're looking at draft-eligible guys coming out of a playoff team, you might be hoping for one and a half points per game on a playoff run, maybe two points per game, or even more if because it's a small sample size. If they play like nine games and they put up like 20 points, like that's not entirely unheard of. So I think maybe some of the lack of compete rumors might be coming from that just like, well, look, he 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 wasn't trying that hard. You know, he didn't score that many points coming into the playoffs. Really, I don't honestly see that. It's kind of funny because a lot of people that will say, well, maybe that is that can point to the fact that he wasn't competing that hard are the same people that are also going to say, oh, well, his team sucked. So that explains uh, why his production in general wasn't that great this season. Now, I don't like to use the, the team excuse either for prospects. You know, right in general, yeah, his team wasn't that good, but they definitely he definitely could have put up more points if he uh, developed better. You know, two years ago, three years ago, everybody was looking at this guy and he's like, "Man, this is one of the, this is one of the best prospects of of the decade." And then you know, COVID happened, and honestly, I think that had a big impact on his trajectory. But either way, he still could have played better this season. Does that mean his compete level is bad, though? I don't think so. I, I, I really don't. That being said, that will be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you believed it deserved a like, please do give it a like. That really helps me out. I believe another video on screen now if you guys want to click on it. If not, that's okay. Uh, do whatever you want to do, but whatever you do, guys, make sure you have a nice day.